ਕਿੱਥੇ ਗਿਆ ਉੱਤਰ ਚਲ ਕੋਈ ਗੱਲ ਨਹੀਂ ਆਪਾਂ ਕਹਾਂ ਨਾ ਲੈਕਚਰ ਲੈ ਲਈਏ ਫਿਰ ਦੇਖ ਲਓ ਕਿਤੇ ਉੱਪਰ ਤੋਂ ਲੈ ਵੈਲਕਮ ਟੂ ਫਿਜ਼ਿਕਸ ਮੇਟ ਈਜ਼ੀ ਚੈਨਲ so we were doing x ray spectra and we have done continuous x ray spectra in continuous spectra we have argued that the continuous spectra is due to the acceleration of electrons first i will give you the brief view of uh, whole x rays that we have done x ray spectra continuous and characteristics So first we have got x rays the wavelength of x rays vary from 1 angstrom to 100 angstrom and their energy varies from 100 electron volts to 10000 electron volts we are 10 kilo electron volts now <coughs> the potential difference that we need to produce 1 angstrom or uh, or or uh, uh 100 angstroms wavelength for that we need about uh, you can say 10000 uh, volts to 1 lakh volts and uh, what happens fast moving electrons this fast moving electrons they are attracted by nuclei they are accelerated and they emit radiations um and those radiations are continuous ones and there is lambda min or minimum frequency corresponding to this spectra here this lambda min lambda min is that an that uh, wavelength of that photon in which whole of the kinetic energy is lost in one collision so in this case the energy of the photon is equal to the initial kinetic energy of the electron and in this way lambda min is equal to hc by kinetic energy or this is inversely lambda min is inversely proportional to the kinetic energy of the incident electron larger the kinetic energy c here larger the kinetic energy or larger the voltage lesser will be the lambda min and uh, intensity of x rays they vary on the filament current more the filament current more will be the number of electrons emitted and more will be the photons emitted in this way uh intensity of photon is directly proportional to intensity of filament current and then we have got concept of soft ray soft x rays and hard x rays soft x rays are those whose wavelength is more than 1 angstrom and hard x rays are those whose wavelength is less than 1 angstrom and this was that we have done previously i have just recalled it quickly and now this is the continuous spectra on this continuous spectra they are superimposed peaks like this these superimposed peaks is due to discrete spectra or line spectra as we know that the line spectra originates from the transition of electrons from higher energy level to low energy level i am talking about line emission spectra now what happens from where this characteristic x ray spectrum why do we call it characteristic because this spectra the spacing between the lines the position and spacing between the line is basically dependent upon the nature of the atomic structure of the metal now the atomic structure means that the uh, what are the values of energy for different orbits because the energy values for different orbits is dependent upon the atomic number as well as the orbit number and this is the basic property of that particular atom that's why we call this as characteristic x ray spectrum because this is the basic character of the atom which is used as a target and we use uh, heavy um, heavy atoms with high value of z number <coughs> for example molybdenum etc it consists of few discrete wavelengths superimposed on continuous spectra for example these two this is the continuous spectra these two peaks they are superimposed upon it now the wavelengths are characteristic of the target material of x ray tube now what happens how does line spectra originate here is the incident electron it hits the electron in orbit first orbit this electron is ejected and a vacancy is created here 
Now, as we have shown in this diagram, I will enlarge the diagram so as to have a better view. Now, in this way, this is the electron from the first orbit. This is the incident electron. Electron from the first orbit is ejected like this. Now, here is a vacancy in first shell or we, uh, uh, no, sorry, here is, this is the first shell. Electron hits the n is equal to 1, the first shell or the k shell. Now, here a vacancy occurs. Now, electron from second level can fall in the first level third to first transition and then fourth to first transition and then fifth to first transition now they give rise to k alpha k beta k gamma and k delta lines so these k alpha and k k beta and k alpha lines are shown like this and now if this electron hits if the oh yeah. if the incident electron hits the electron in the second orbit it creates vacancy in the second orbit this is the electron which is ejected out of the second orbit now there is a vacancy electron from third orbit can fall in it fourth orbit can fall in it and the fifth orbit can fall in it. So they give rise to L alpha, L beta and L gamma radiations. So these radiations, they are characteristic of the atom. They are dependent on the energy level, value of energy attached to each orbit and the gaps between them. So that's why we call this as characteristic spectra. It is a discrete spectra. It's a line spectra. So these spectra has been shown in another way, which is a, a better representation of this is this one. For example, this is K shell, we can see in K shell, electron from L shell falls in K shell, K alpha and then K beta. So similarly, we can see in L shell, L alpha and L beta. So this is how characteristic spectra originate. And now there is a Mosley law. Mosley law gives us the relationship between frequency of the radiation or the photon emitted with the atomic number. And this graph is under root Z, under root frequency, under root nu and z. It's a state line like this. Now nu is directly proportional to z square. Nu is equal to a into z minus a square where small a is a constant and this, no sorry, capital A is a constant and this small a, basically this small a tells us about the screening effect of the electron. So this uh, actually, this contribution is from screening effect of the electrons and this is basically proportionality constant. So, this is Mosley law. Graph between square root of frequency and Z is a straight line and the graph between frequency and Z, another under root nu and Z is a straight line. And graph between nu and z square is parabola. Know this. Note this fact. This graph is parabola. So with these words, our, at, our uh, chapter on uh, atoms has been finished. And uh, we will start with the next lecture uh, with nuclear physics. And uh, the next chapter that is on nuclei, we will start it in my uh, uh, Next lecture, before finishing this lecture, I will request all of you to kindly share the video if you like it and uh, kindly comment if you don't like it. With these words, I finish this lecture.